All right, take two on value study, or value basically beginning of painting for my design class. First one did not record, and uh, so we're gonna do it again. Maybe, hopefully pretty quick here, but just wanted to give everybody a good chance at it. This was the original painting, and I went ahead and just wiped it off, so this is kind of the nice patina that it left. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of pretend that I'm starting from the beginning. The colors I have are titanium white, Indian yellow, transparent earth red, and French ultramarine blue. And I'm not gonna worry too much about color. I'm just more going after the correct values, lights and darks. And I'm gonna get this painting started, kind of the blueprints put on so that I can get it built up with color next week. So it's got a little bit of Gamsol paint thinner right here. So when you see me dipping into this corner and I'm going to go ahead and just tip my canvas just a touch warmer with some Indian yellow. It's pretty wet, um, a little too wet actually. Uh, so I don't want quite as much paint thinner, but I'm going to go ahead and wipe it back down with my paper towel, just to make sure that I got um, most of the slipperiness off. Let's give that a little bit of a wipe down, kind of move it around. Makes a slightly slicker surface to work on and gives me a nice warm golden base to build on. You can see some of the uh, yesterday's painting is coming off still. All right, so the design here is based on a wetlands not too far from my studio. And I'm going to get in my darks and well, I'll cover the whole thing with a mid tone. Then I'll bring in my darks and then I'll begin to wipe away to uh, build up my form really quickly. So now what I'm going to do, use the same brush since it's already messy. I'm just going to cover that with some earth red or transparent earth red. Give that a little bit of a wipe down as well. Kind of just using a medium pressure. Don't want to wipe it all off. I'm just kind of moving the paint around a little bit. Again, picking up some of the paint thinners, getting soaked into the towel so that I don't have a sloppy, super slippery surface to work on. It's just kind of a slick surface. And again, I'm just doing a value-based beginning, kind of just getting my big shapes, my big pattern, my big design. All right. Now with a little bit thicker earth red, I can even mix a little Indian yellow if I want into it. I'm gonna stay away from my white here in the beginning. I'm gonna make sure I've got a fairly straight horizon line. Actually, I want a very straight horizon line. I have the bottom of the far back water there as a marker. <clears throat> and in class together, we designed 
we brought in another water element from a photo one of the students had from her trip to Africa. So we'll bring in elements of that. bring in kind of the top shape here so that's from my horizon line so this will come up a little higher above that I'm just looking for the abstract shapes of it So I'm trying to keep everything very um, abstract, not overthinking anything here. I'm not thinking objects at all. I'm just thinking the shapes. Go ahead and start bringing in some of my French ultramarine, mixing that into the earth red. That'll make a really nice, very dark color. Or dark value, I guess I should say. Gonna... All right, phone rang, cut off the video, so put this as part two of our short little video demonstration here.
just kind of filling in my shapes here. I'm going to go ahead and brush it out a little bit with a shop brush. It, um, Then we're going to have some really dramatic clouds up in here. So kind of bring some of that in. So just very messy, big shapes, trying to simplify things as much as possible, tying in my darks to each other, tying in my lights to each other, and keeping things simple. This is kind of a roadmap for my future painting. So I'll just take a, a chip brush, a little cheap chip brush, and I'm just going to kind of feather this out a little bit here. some of the darks in the clouds. And nothing is dear right now. Everything's highly mobile. I can change anything I want in here really quick. I could, you know, wipe it all away again. I can, this is where you want to do your big planning, moving mountains, moving trees, you know, changing it, changing things that you might want to change. And it's almost like a no tan painting, if you can think of it that way still. Just dark and light. All right, kind of hard to see right now. Um, but now what I'm gonna do is with my paper towel, I'm gonna come and wipe off the lightest areas. So that'll be my, where the sun is kind of in the clouds, some of these clouds I'll come in and wipe down and then also in the water and then we're gonna have a band of water back here. And that'll also allow me to um, start to give these trees a little more interesting shape. You probably can't even tell that those are supposed to be trees, but all right, I'm just gonna go ahead and start where the sun is. All I'm doing is just pushing in with my paper towel, kind of lifting away. I'm 
just going to try to make basically an interesting design in here. Most all of this will be covered again, you know, 90% of this will be covered again later with color. So this is mostly just for me, nobody besides you guys on the video, but you know, my end viewers, my end client, um, won't really know how I built this up and they won't see most of these, most of what I'm doing here. And so if I push less hard onto the surface, it picks up less of the paint. So I can kind of begin to do my values in that way. So I kind of consider this like an, a subtractive way of painting and like to think of it like as if it were just a big ball of uh, soft clay that I could add to very easily. I can subtract to it and just kind of mold it, push it around. So it's almost like the sculptural side of painting. If I change my mind or if I want another dark area, I can just, you know, quickly come in, add that in. Everything's very easy to manipulate at this stage and very forgiving. Some of these lights reflecting down into the water. And for some of the smaller areas, I've got big fat fingers, so you know it's hard for me to get back in here and make little marks. So I just grab a Q-tip. I'm gonna bring a band of water that's way back here.
I'm going to go ahead and take a Q-tip and dip it in paint thinner just to get back to my brighter, lighter lights. It's kind of the uh, halo around the clouds there as the sun's kind of peeking around behind it. slowly picking up the paint. Again, just giving myself a road map for when this painting, when this level layer is pretty dry next Wednesday for class, I'll have a nice, hopefully a nice design I'll have my big plan kind of figured out and a value base to build on. So basically I'm freeing myself up that next week I get to do all the fun stuff, the color. Even though I do really enjoy this size, size too, well, this part of it as well. One of the last things I want to do is I'm going to come and pick up some of the light off the top of the uh, the grasses or the field here so that it's a little bit lighter than my upright trees.
And I'm gonna go ahead and chop these trees down in size a little bit so that they're not as tall as these trees because I want them to come forward compared to this tree line. So maybe that guy can go up, touch the cloud there. And this is the far back tree line across the pond or lake or whatever's back there. So yeah, it's a pretty okay beginning. I can kind of feel it. I can kind of see my big shapes, my story of, you know, how things are relating. It's beginning to materialize. Now, the last things I can do is I can clean this brush a little bit and I can come back with some of my French Ultramarine Earth Red Mix if I want, and I can bring in my darkest darks. And this will just help give, bring in that, bring back that strong third value, dark, and give form. Help things kind of turn. So I could have left this basically as a no tan. Now it's about a two or three values, a light, medium. And now the darks are coming back in. So basically a three value painting.
Sometimes when I'm doing these, I'll make them quite detailed, but that can make you kind of sad and make you try to protect your drawing when you're coming in and adding color. So usually I'll leave them kind of, kind of messy. Um, again, it's just for me. Most people will never see this. A little behind the scenes here. Bring back my lights just a little bit more with a clean paper towel. Just, they're not very extreme. May as well make this roadmap very clear for myself here. I just took a little more paint thinner and I'm hitting it one more time. Squeak, squeak. So I just put a little paper, or a little more paint thinner on the paper towel and hit it with quite a bit of pressure. And I was actually able to get it almost all the way back to the white of the gesso and bring a little bit of that light straight down underneath. Again, I could have stopped quite a while ago and had plenty enough information to come back to, but I'm having fun for one. This is great, just moving things around, experimenting, trying little slight tweaks while it's nice and wet and easy to manipulate.
lighten that back water area just a touch too. Pretty much done now. I'm just gonna soften the tops of these trees a little bit. Give these far back trees a little more shape. See if I can move the camera in a little better angle. All right, thank you guys. Sorry the first um, class didn't record properly, but I'm hoping this is a little better, a little more clear and I look forward to class on Wednesday. Thank you guys.